Abdul Hussain joins us now live from Nairobi, Kenya. He's the Doctors Without Borders Operational Manager for Sudan, South Sudan, Somalia, and Liberia. So, uh, Abdullah, thanks so much for being with us. I want you to listen to the head of the World Thank Health Organization. He spoke about the current dangers now facing aid and medical workers in Sudan, especially in the capital. Listen to this. There are disturbing reports of some health facilities being looted and others being used for military purposes. It's also reported that some hospitals are already closed or on the brink of closure due to attacks and the lack of medical personnel and medical supplies. So clearly right now for medical workers, it's very dangerous to be in Sudan, very dangerous to try and do their jobs. But is it being made even more dangerous because hospitals are being targeted? Is, it, is that still happening? Are hospitals still coming under fire by these rival military factions? Yes, um, thank you very much for having me. Yes, the hospitals has been uh, targeted and uh, some of them accidentally. Uh, according to the information we have in Khartoum, 50% of the hospitals have been out of action uh, in the first 72 hours. And this is because either the staff were not feeling safe to go there or um, the hospitals themselves have been uh, uh, subject to a shelling or, or, or bombing. So just to confirm, half the hospitals in the capital, you say, are no longer operational? Yes. Okay. The director of the World Health Organization also mentioned hospitals that are on the brink of closure because of a lack of medical supplies. So are there supplies in country which can't be delivered safely, or are supplies just running low in general? Yes, the, at the moment, one of the major issues that we are facing is exactly that. The hospitals, the supplies to hospitals, the personnel to reach hospitals is very difficult because the fighting was not was very intense in Khartoum in the first days. Yesterday, it was a little bit uh, better, but the, still the fighting was happening in some hours of the day. This means that patients are not able to go to hospitals. Staff themselves are not able to, those that were off duty, to reach hospitals. And the staff that are working on hospitals are running out of, uh, are exhausted. Their supplies are di diminishing. And the water, electricity has been an issue in, in Khartoum. Uh, Doctors Without Borders operates um, all over the country. We had programs before this uh, uh, violence has started. And some, or most of our programs, some were suspended because we, we, our staff are not feeling safe to go to the, to the workplace. In others, we are receiving uh, wounded, like the project in uh, North Darfur in Al-Fashir, where we run, where we support the Ministry of Health Hospital. In the first 72 hours, we had uh, 183 uh, patients arriving wounded civilians arriving to that hospital. And this is a hospital that was generally caring for maternal health, but all of a sudden repurposed to, to care for wounded. Uh, Egypt's foreign minister spoke Tuesday on the role Sudan's regional neighbors can play in trying to end this crisis. Here he is, listen to this. I think we have to concentrate at this stage in uh, trying to encourage for a peaceful dialogue, for an end to the conflict. And we must concentrate our efforts, uh, and we do so in uh, conjunction and uh, through our communications with the various uh, uh, neighboring countries uh, and also uh, those who have influenced uh, the United States, uh, uh, our European friends. Okay, so encouraging peace talks between these two factions, these two generals, that's a good idea. But you know, is there anything else which the United States and Egypt and other nations could be doing right now to try and improve you know, what is fast becoming a humanitarian crisis across the country? I think what is required today is that the parts of the conflict and the people that can influence them ensure that, they, that the population of Sudan today needs humanitarian aid. It, the, the health workers and the humanitarian workers also need access. Our staff are exhausted, working for 22 hours and more, uh, working in hospitals, trapped, and some of them we cannot reach them because, the, for example, the capital where we have uh, in, in Khartoum, cannot, uh, cannot, uh, the staff cannot sell supplies to the projects we have in the, in the rural areas. And this, is, this situation cannot wait uh, longer. We need a situation where the health workers today, which is the priority to care for wounded, have access, and there is a let up to the conflict. And we, also, we are also calling for, uh, for a respect of, uh, of the health facilities, for respect of health workers, for respect of civilians, because this fighting was happening in urban areas. There is a lot of accidental injuries to the population. 
Abdullah, we wish you and all your staff there in Sudan to be safe. Um, hopefully this will be over sooner rather than later, but it does not look like that right now. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you very much.